Hello, everyone. We're back again with another episode of The Fact, the series that discusses international issues every week. Uh, today, we're going to talk about U.S. policy and its consequences and also effects on uh, different countries, especially in recent years and especially in Middle East. We have two respected guests tonight with us. We have Mr. Iyad Khudr from Syria. He's a former Syrian journalist. And also we have Mr. Tishanovic. He's actually uh, from Serbia, and he's a political activist. I would like to thank both of you for joining us. It is a true honor to have both of you on the program. Um, I would like to start with the first question from uh, Mr. Khudr. As you know, uh, in these recent years, USA has uh, contributed a lot on uh, military um, campaign against Yemen and Yemeni people, and it actually supported military uh, campaigns against this poor country. Um, but at the same time, they claim that they support human rights in different countries and in the world. What is your take and what is your opinion about this contradiction? Uh, well, it is a, a good question, actually. Uh, uh, I think uh, the war in Yemen should be embarrassing uh, all countries which are uh, supporting in any way the uh, war machine uh, that is bombing uh, Yemen. Uh, uh, however, uh, well, uh, of course, first I, I would like to uh, confirm my uh, full heart compassion with the uh, Yemeni people, uh, no matter uh, what is their political orientation, uh, but uh, in, in the end, like as you say, they are poor people uh, and they are victims uh, and they haven't uh, chosen uh, the war. Uh, however, uh, well, uh, to be realistic, very realis realistic, act actually, um, uh, sadly, uh, uh, it seems that uh, uh, there is no action, no strong, strong action against the war in, in Yemen. Like uh, it, it's even like a kind of like uh, a very trivial uh, news um, if if it's covered in the news. Uh, so I, I see that the effect of the war uh, in Yemen on the U.S. reputation is relatively very little, um, as the dirty job is done actually by the Saudis. And of course, uh, other mercenaries, unfortunately, like uh, from uh, Sudan uh, and uh, some other uh, poor countries. Uh, the Saudi regime is, uh, of course, an ally of the U.S. But um, but can you tell me uh, which decade in the last uh, 70 years there wasn't a massacre or a destructive war uh, done done directly or indirectly by the U.S.? People still remember the nuclear bomb on Hiroshima, the disastrous war on Vietnam, the NATO destructive war on uh, former uh, Yugoslavia in uh, Balkan, like, uh, you know, uh, Serbia, Kosovo, uh, Croatia, uh, the war on Afghanistan, Iraq, Libya, you name it. Uh, so the list is uh, so long. So so why would why would people take an action against the U.S. support to the war in Yemen when they didn't say a word against the war on Libya, for example? Uh, so unfortunately, it's become something uh, normal and uh, something shocking. Actually, just uh, today I saw a group picture of the I think the G20 in Osaka, if I am correct. Uh, 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 and uh, I saw uh, the uh, Saudi Crown MBS uh, like standing in the front uh, just next to Donald Trump. So uh, this is really uh, a blatant example of the uh, double standard, as you said, like as you described it, uh, or contradiction, as you mentioned it, of the U.S. in terms of uh, human rights. Uh, MBS who uh, sold uh, uh, a, a journalist uh, because uh, he was criticizing it uh, like even very very logically uh, so 
uh, where where are human rights like uh, in, in such a situation? All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Khodor. Uh Well, actually, you mentioned very interesting point about uh, basically U.S. decisions and uh, you know attempts in this war, and also in different uh, attributions uh, and different you know happenings and events in the region. Uh, Tasha, Mr. Uh, Tashanovich, I would like actually to know about the consequences of Trump decision, especially recently, because as you know, Trump uh, decided to actually pull out from JCPOA. It, he actually decided to pull out from Paris uh, contract, and also it uh, attempt to he attempt to actually introduce Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Such decisions. Do you think would affect mentioned including the uh, acknowledgement of Jerusalem as the capital of Israel, acknowledging the Golan Heights as a part of Israel, uh, pulling out of the GCPOA? Uh, it's clear that the Trump uh, is affected. It's clear that the, uh, Trump is under the influence of the Zionist neocon lobby that is in his administration. When we take a look at the first. Uh, people that were uh, next to Trump in his first choice of administration, Mr. Tillerson, Mr. Flynn, uh, those people weren't that more mongering as the current, uh, uh, for example, uh, General Secretary Mr. Bolton or uh, Mr. Pompeo is. It is clear that uh, from the beginning Trump had the uh, backing of the very influential Jewish lobby in the United States and that he, for in exchange for that support, he had to deliver a certain policy. His policies full supported the Israel and all of the Israel imperialist goals in the Middle East. With it goes that uh, Trump's uh, friendship with uh, uh, Mohammed bin Salman uh, through his uh, to a, a, a husband of his daughter Jared Kushner, who is one of the leaders of the uh, Zionist lobby within the U.S. administration. Um, Trump has made, we had big hopes for Trump here in Europe. We hoped that he could be a man of peace, man that would be, bring together Russia and United States, man that would pull the United States out of the war. Uh, before the election, he had some really, really good statements. For example, he was against NATO. He, he had like negative statements about NATO. He, we thought, Many of us thought that Trump will take America to a different isolationist uh, foreign policy, that America should take uh, care of its own business and shouldn't meddle that much in the foreign countries. But from the choice of the, from, but now it's very really clear from what happened with Iran, with Venezuela, uh, what is going on with Yemen, that the Trump is no different than Obama, than George Bush, that he is just another. Uh, and just another puppet of the U.S. machinery, because here was the thing. Uh, the whole elections in the United States are just a fraud. Uh, the presidents change, but the policy never changes. You know, we have the same policies with the Republicans and the Democrats even. Nothing will really change, because those who are holding the truly the position of power in the United States will never allow any kind of independent policy on their part. And I think that the people around the world are starting to realize that. But the main problem is that some of the things that have been done can be reversed. You can't rebuild Libya out of the ashes. It's a destroyed country. You can't make Iraq what it used to be. And now, unfortunately, Yemen, one of the most beautiful Arab countries, is uh, under, uh, under attack by Saudi regime and it's a uh, one sad war that nobody really talks about because we hear non-stop about some wars that we should hear non-stop about for example about Syria but Yemen is never really mentioned in any kind of media at all and uh, luckily Trump has some enemies within some parts of the American political elites that do for some reason have some negativity, some negative sentiment towards Saudi Arabia. 
And because of it, we can like hear a maybe a bit there and there in the Congress something about the sale of the United uh, of sale of the United States made arms to the Saudi Arabia. But without it, I don't think that nobody will in the West would actually hear about the war in Yemen. Thank you, Mr. Tashanovich. Uh, you uh, perfectly, uh, you know, described the, uh, you know, the. Um, effect that such decision would have on the image of either United States or uh, Trump. But um, here's also another thing which, uh, which recently you have been witnessing uh, that, which is the negotiations between United States and North Korea. And as you know, they have been going back and forth in order to get into some results, finally. But uh, so far, there there has been no uh, results, and uh, basically, uh, so far we uh, saw nothing uh, except zero results. So, uh, Mr. Holder, do you think um, such kind of um, you know useless, I can say, useless negotiations would have any kind of uh, negative or I don't know maybe positive uh, effect on the image of the United like that these negotiations are uh, completely uh, useless uh, well uh, you know uh, there are some positive aspects of the uh, US policy uh, under uh, Trump's uh, administration uh, I think uh, I evaluate even this failure uh, of negotiation with North Korea as a brave attempt and uh, it's a historic breakthrough in the crisis with uh, North Korea. You know, like uh, North Korea uh, like had been kind of uh, a taboo uh, area like uh, or uh, let's say like a blackout or a black box uh, to the world. Uh, so uh, it it was really uh, good. I think uh, everybody was uh, glad to to see some uh, breakthrough. Uh, and uh, by the way, like just today, uh, President Trump had a historic meeting with North Korea's uh, Kim Jong Un in the bordering area between the two Koreas, which will, uh, anyways, register the name of Donald Trump in history as the first sitting U.S. president to set foot in uh, the uh, land, on the land of uh, North Korea. Uh, well, uh, of course, uh, uh, it, it doesn't uh, matter uh, like uh, what are the uh, 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 intentions of or the results of the negotiations, but um, uh, uh, to me, uh, it's become uh, clear that President Trump placed the policy of the brink of uh, abyss or brink of war. Uh, he, he definitely does not want a direct military confrontation uh, between the US and uh, North Korea uh, or between uh, the US and any other country uh, with uh, Iran, with uh, Russia. Uh, so uh, he just threatens with war. So uh, uh, if you allow me to, to like explain that, because this is important to understand uh, like uh, the current U.S. policy. So Trump seems to me trying to use uh, all the cars uh, that the U.S. Uh, is possessing as much as he can, uh, or rather uh, threatening threatening to use them if he doesn't use them. But at least he he threatens to use them. For example, militarily speaking, uh, he threatens by war. Uh, like he uh, did that with North Korea before. In, also in economy, like uh, for example, his war on Huawei uh, recently, as you know. And in the end, by the way, they agreed just uh, like uh, I think uh, yesterday there was a breaking news that uh, like uh, in the end uh, he shook hand with uh, Chinese uh, officials. And uh, uh, in the end, like uh, it's only about uh, exporting uh, American uh, uh, vegetables uh, to to China, like uh, it's really like uh, like funny, and like that. In the end, this is what uh, all what he he wanted, uh, like something in business. Uh, he you know he's a businessman in in the end, rather than an American president. 
uh, so uh, uh, and uh, uh, something that characterizes Trump's uh, behavior that like he doesn't care, he doesn't respect uh, signed agreements. Um, so uh, uh, having been aware of Trump's mentality uh, after the Korean crisis last year when the world, you know, uh, held its breath because of Trump threats to nuke North Korea. Uh, and then we watched him uh, shaking hands with Kim Jong-un in, in Singapore, what was known as Singapore summit. So uh, having understood Trump's mentality, um, other countries, uh, including Iran, uh, have been more confident and uh, uh, they uh, haven't taken Trump's threats uh, uh, any more uh, uh, seriously. Uh, th though I believe Iran, of course, would do the same uh, even if uh, uh, Iran believed Trump's threats were serious uh, because Iran like, uh, is confident like, and, uh, you know, um, uh, Iran's policy are not uh, based on uh, like, uh, the, the threats uh, however, uh, I think this game uh, of making statements of declaration of war on, on Twitter uh, one day and making uh, very peaceful statements the next day uh, uh, affected the image of Trump very badly among uh, people throughout the world. And many people around the world started to make fun of uh, Trump's uh, tw tweets. So it, it damaged the uh, U.S. Uh, image in the end. All right, uh, thank you, Mr. Fuller. Um, Tasha, you know that uh, there has been some kind of attempt uh, toward uh, confronting the dominance of uh, dollar in different countries and universally. It is, it is not something new, actually, because some say that uh, Russia and some other countries like China are uh, commencing this kind of attempt. But um, as you might know, uh, in the past, we also had different countries uh, who were trying or attempting to uh, somehow confront the dominance and power of dollar in uh, the universe. But the question is, if some kind of attempt like that to start, uh, would it have any kind of uh, significant effect on the economy? Well, uh, current uh, position of the United States as a world economic dominant power relies on the power of the dollar. Ever since the creation of uh, so-called fiat money and abandonment of the golden standard, uh, dollar has become and still is the number one world's currency and it's currently a world's reserve currency. There are some attempts by some countries uh, to de-dollarize the trade. For example, Russia and China will now trade in their own uh, national currencies uh, when they are exchanging goods. But uh, the main problem that we are facing here is the petrodollar. As long as the US dollar is almost the only currency that is being accepted for oil. I think that it's very hard to challenge the uh, status of the dollar as a reserve world currency. And therefore, I would like to point out the great mission of Saudi Arabia uh, when in the 70s they decided that they will institute petrodollar. With it, they helped the United States win the uh, Cold War because the United States were able to print the money and just release it out of the United States without no actual need to have a, some kind of backing of that money be, because you need to have that before the gold standard. Uh, as you mentioned, some of the leaders have tried uh, to abandon the dollar and we see how uh, uh, how the United States got rid of them. First of all, I'm thinking about Muammar Gaddafi, who wanted to create an African currency of gold dinner, and uh, who was overthrown after that. It's clearly that uh, the United States doesn't want uh, anyone to challenge the dollar. Uh, e even, they will even attack their own partners for challenging the dollar. For example, there are some authors who wrote very uh, scientific, academic works, how uh, the 
euro a crisis of the euro as a currency uh, is was influenced by United States uh, in order to uh, somehow uh, make a euro less competitive uh, towards the dollar. So in that regard, I would think that any country that would individually try to create a reserve currency for the world would fail. But I think combined, maybe, uh, China, United, uh, China, Iran, Russia could do it, but the problem is motivation. Uh, until recently, Chinese had almost no motivation, no motive uh, to stand up against the United States. But hopefully, if this trade war continues and if there is no agreement, Chinese will maybe start to think about uh, making some kind of alternative to the current uh, dollar system and the banking system. It's clear. Uh, from the way that uh, sanctions functions, function towards the Iran, that the current banking system is very bad. Currently, you can transfer money to Iranian banks using the SWIFT system, because SWIFT system, although it's presented as an independent body that is enabling the banks and the financial institutions around the world to uh, transfer money, uh, they listen to the United States and they ban all transfers to Iran. And uh, unless we create our own internet, our own Google, our own Swiss system, our own MasterCard, Visa card system, our own currency, we will keep on being dependent on the United States and we will be just slaves of them. Perfect. Thank you so very much. Um, well, hereby we would like to actually uh, go to the last question, which is the most general question right now. Uh, after all this, you know, uh, recent events, uh, after this war of Syria, Yemen, and all the, you know, Cold War that we are, it's, it is still going on somehow between uh, Russia and uh, United States, and right now between China and United States. And do you think that, uh, in opinion of people, in, in public opinions, do you think uh, United States is considered as stronger or weaker than before. Mr. Koder, would you please uh, give us your... I will be, I'll try to be honest with you and like, uh, uh, like reflect the uh, public opinion um, like here in Europe as it is on, on the ground. Well, uh, uh, actually, uh, even in the Middle East, like as I am Syrian and I come from Syria, I, I feel that uh, uh, people still believe uh, in American su supremacy, uh, all right? Like uh, even uh, when uh, this is wrong, and uh, this is a very important point, by the way, to, to like uh, pay attention, to pay people attention. Uh, like uh, whatever happens, like uh, let's say if uh, 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 like uh, Trump make a good uh, some uh, positive move towards Russia uh, they say ah okay so Russia works for the US uh, if uh, like uh, uh, the US decides uh, to uh, attack Syria uh, they say you see it's strong if the US uh, refrains from attacking Syria so they say ah okay so they they want uh, the Syrian government uh, to stay uh, like so uh, they never believe in themselves in in the resistance they never believe that uh, the us refrained from the act of war because of the resistance so uh, this is a problem like uh, till now people all uh, believe in not only american supremacy but like in uh, absolute supremacy that like uh, the us uh, rules everything in the world which is of course uh, not true at all uh, because uh, we have seen many ex experiences, uh, like uh, uh, whether uh, talking about uh, the uh, Lebanese resistance that deterred Israel and freed uh, Lebanon, uh, or uh, about uh, the Chinese uh, economy, or uh, other uh, examples. Uh, so uh, I believe the U.S. will continue to be strong in the minds of people as long as it maintains the following. Uh, the uh, dollar as the uh, denominating currency in the international financial system, 
and having the cutting edge uh, military technology uh, and also having the supremacy in the cyber domain uh, via giant American companies such as uh, Google, Apple, Facebook, Cisco, you name it, um, uh, in, in addition to uh, like uh, the hardware, uh, computer, laptops, etc. Uh, and, and by the way, like this explains the rage and anger uh, Trump uh, has against Huawei, the Chinese giant, uh, because uh, Huawei uh, represented a serious uh, competitor uh, to the American supremacy. Uh, so, uh, uh, also, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, uh, even if, uh, like, I, I know the U.S. is uh, considered an absolute enemy to Iran, but, but uh, like, uh, uh, you should uh, study uh, uh, how America uh, has maintained its strengths uh, and even learn from, uh, from uh, the American uh, uh, policy and flexibility. So, I think uh, we have to admit that there is a good feature in American policy, which is the flexibility. Uh, like, uh, so uh, uh, if we expect uh, uh, the U.S. to, to uh, uh, never refrain from uh, acts of war to, to be considered strong, uh, uh, the U.S. in that case would, uh, would be just like the Nazis, the uh, uh, Hitler's Germany. Like, uh, and let's remember that uh, 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 one of the main reasons why uh, uh, Hitler uh, or the uh, Axis in the World War II uh, lost the war is because uh, the uh, no one uh, uh, back or no no one refrain uh, like uh, Hitler never uh, allowed uh, his uh, any of his, his armies to to uh, withdraw back, which caused uh, uh, huge like uh, destruction. Uh, so if uh, like uh, you still uh, like allow me to. To explain one one more thing, uh, like uh, there there I read an an interesting uh, article in uh, an American magazine, the Foreign Affairs, which is like a very well known uh, uh, magazine, uh, which uh, talks about uh, the uh, U.S. foreign policy under uh, Trump's administration, comparing to the previous uh, ones. Uh, so. Uh, uh, it's based on. Uh, 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 like what differentiate uh, Trump's uh, policy from uh, others is that uh, Trump uh, finished the era of uh, Europe first slogan and moved to the era of uh, USA first. Uh, so uh, uh, this is basically uh, what does it mean USA first? This is basically what what uh, Trump campaigned for to reach the uh, White House. Uh, so uh, those who voted for Trump didn't do that to go for uh, further wars. Uh, and Trump seems to have already started his campaign for the second term uh, in the White House, basing on this. Uh, and this differentiated uh, Trump from almost all American presidents since Franklin uh, Roosevelt. Uh, this is according, according, as I said, to an article in uh, Foreign Affairs and entitled The Strategic Thinking That Made America Great. Europe first and why it still matters. However, the Trump's administration has been uh, disrespecting its agreement, even with, with its uh, key allies, such as the uh, EU and the UK, the withdrawal from the nuclear deal with Iran and the uh, other contracts like Paris contract, uh, uh, as well as uh, the uh, crisis with uh, Huawei, uh, which uh, uh, represented a violation of uh, international laws. Uh, so uh, 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 Trump uh, actually uh, uh, now like uh, uh, through, through all that uh, and he uh, hasn't been caring about his agreements. So I think uh, this uh, degrade, de uh, how to say, degraded or like uh, let's say this depreciated the uh, credibility of Trump uh, even in the uh, uh, for the uh, European uh, governments, because like he lost uh, his uh, credibility, uh, so which is a, a weakness. But uh, but he uh, seems to uh, not to be caring uh, because uh, now he's uh, following the policy of uh, USA first. That's right. Uh, thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Khudr. 
Uh, Tasha, do you have, uh, as we actually came to the uh, end of our program, but in case you want to add anything, uh, in case is, uh, there is something that we didn't cover, you are uh, actually uh, good to go in case uh, you want to add to anything to, uh, you know, concerning our subjects. As you pointed out, the United States are losing their power but that makes them more dangerous than ever. We know that the wounded beast is the most dangerous beast. And I think that maybe within these processes that we talked about, the processes of de-dollarization, the loss of geopolitical importance of the United States, the uh, tension between the allies of the United States and the United States itself, maybe the solution will be in some next great war and unfortunately some people in the trump administration want iran to be that next great war uh, i think that trump personally knows that iran would be a very uh, hard uh, how would i say hard not to crack because iran isn't uh, just a country it's an ancient civilization uh, that is thousands of years old and unlike the Saddam's army who wasn't willing to defend Saddam in 2003 uh, the Iranian army and Iranian people are ready to defend Iran so I think that the Trump himself is uh, scared of an idea of attacking Iran although he's presided into it by his people from his administration such as Mr. Bolton I hope that the, by God's will somehow this situation, this very tensious situation that we have now with the uh, Persian Gulf uh, can be somehow revol uh, resolved and I hope that Trump will have enough clarity to not start another big war because I think that if a war with Iran starts it will be much bigger than any of the other wars that USA has fought ever since the Second World War. Uh, thank you, Mr. Tashanovich. Uh, Mr. Khudar, do you uh, want to add anything? Actually, uh, I, I would like uh, to uh, thank you first uh, for having me. And uh, like, uh, well, uh, regarding the, the U.S., uh, I think that uh, uh, we should be aware that uh, the U.S. is not uh, like... Uh, uh, behaving uh, randomly uh, there are uh, think tanks in the US who are like planning uh, the uh, uh, policy even the long-term uh, policy of the US so so I think uh, uh, the US uh, was uh, let's say wise and smart to uh, withdraw and to stop uh, the wars after uh, they got involved in endless wars in uh, Iraq and Afghanistan um, so um, uh, but I believe that uh, this this is also positive for the uh, world uh, not to have another war uh, like uh, with the uh, US uh, and um, well uh, uh, however what I want really to add is that like the problem now is that uh, it seems that the U.S. moved to another kind of war, uh, like the U.S., uh, for example, in, in, in Libya, can you tell me how many American soldiers have been killed, uh, how many, uh, what's the number of uh, American casualties in the war in Libya? I think it is uh, zero, uh, like uh, let alone the assassination of the U.S. ambassador, uh, which came uh, later, but uh, like, uh, so... Uh, Actually, the U.S. is losing, losing nothing in the wars of uh, on Libya, on uh, in Syria, in uh, uh, Yemen. Uh, they they are losing uh, nothing. So uh, I think um, uh, the peoples of the uh, world like should focus on the economy, on uh, science, uh, on uh, uh, the uh, uh, cyber uh, domain. Um, like we all know the uh, previous examples about the uh, 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 Stuxnet uh, attack against Iran. Like uh, uh, so, I I think we should uh, uh, work uh, 
like on uh, all these domains, uh, not only expecting the uh, war planes to, to come to attack us. Okay. Uh, I'm really thankful to all of you for your fruitful and informative uh, talks and discussions and answers. Uh, I would like to put an end to this program and to this episode of The Fact. Uh, hopefully, we will have you again on another episode in future. And also, uh, for our listeners and viewers, you can check out our other programs and other episodes on our YouTube channel. Thank you so very much, Mr. Khodr from Syria, and also Mr. Tashanovic from Serbia. Uh, it was a true honor to have both of you on the program. Thank you so very much, and goodbye.